Hey, welcome everyone to part five. I hope everyone is enjoying uh, the knowledge that I'm giving. I, you don't have to read books. Very precise, very concise. You are getting the whole or the overall package that you need to know to clear the PSM one exam, as well as how to educate or train yourself into a Scrum master or a product owner or a developer. Okay, this is Swamijit and uh, this is my profile in LinkedIn. If you have any queries, then please text me. I am always ready to answer or comment. Give me comments in the YouTube video itself. Well, uh, overall, uh, I am knowledge hungry always. So keep on learning, keep on learning, keep on learning. Well, uh, also see watch out my other videos where I talk about data or cryptocurrency. Okay. In part five, uh, today is kind of a low or or, or like a less intense uh, discussion we will do and uh, less intense things because we have covered a lot in the Scrum and then now it's to little bit discuss the uh, peri or the outer or the uh, the extras of Scrum like uh, scaled Scrum. Scaled Scrum means in a company there are not one project running, there are multiple projects running. But if multiple projects aim towards one goal then there are certain ways also there are certain guidelines also in scrum how to execute it like for example if multiple scrums uh, teams are working on one product each group sprints can be different length so then each each there are different scrum teams and then uh, there are different uh, uh, groups of people not scrum teams different group of people working and then uh, there were they're sprinting everyone is sprinting and then each sprint can be of different length in a scale scrum which is aimed towards developing one product for example implementing a big data warehouse of the company or the whole company then there are different applications then you have to uh, create different databases and then all merging into one data mart or something for a scale scrum then is there is only one product backlog very important definition of done is mutually discussed and defined one product as target, one product owner, one scrum master, one increment only and uh, component and feature teams. Component team is like a database team, feature team. There are two type of teams, mix of two teams like component team and feature team where 75%, 25% mix is a good. Scaled Scrum is like multiple teams are working like for example data team, there is master data management team, there is data quality team, there is uh, developers team or something data engineering team data analyst team data reporting team but all are working towards one goal of creating a master plan for the whole company then in that way it is like a scaled scrum there is one product owner and one scrum master and then others are like uh, all small small groups of people working towards the one goal so that is a, in 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 a very precise manner that is what about is scaled scrum Okay, uh, we have almost come to an end of our discussion. Well, to get certified with PSM one, mm, it's uh, six, there is an exam, and uh, that exam. Let me show you. Mm, PSM one uh, exam. Uh, one can uh, get. One can. Uh, yeah, one can register uh, the, for the PSM1 uh, through this scrum.org website and then here uh, yeah, you have to buy this product for 150 euros and then that is how you can register for the exam. There you will be for in 60 minutes you have to answer 80 questions and then 85% is passing which is very hard, very hard, not very hard but then it really needs speed as well as experience in attempting all the questions. So 68 correct answers is needed to qual to get the scrum certification. I didn't take the uh, scrum exam, uh, but then uh, I got an exam. I got a certificate from Udemy itself, and then that is I think it is sufficient because if I take an attempt, if I am failing by two questions, then yeah, 150 dollars gone. Maybe later I will do it, but then now I am not like a officially scrum certified, but then that is. The knowledge that I have, I'm already implementing it. That makes me more empowered to speak about it rather than person with the certification and doesn't know how to implement it. Well, uh, in some little bit things about Scrum Guide. Well, uh, it's less prescriptive. It, it, over the period, it evolved as more flexible. It only focuses towards uh, like uh, uh, self-managing rather than self-organizing. Scrum Master 
is a leader who serves there is no time box for backlog refinement no limited not limited to three question a daily scrum these are the some the scrum guide is like a pdf and then that you can download from anywhere and then uh, yeah uh, the over that document has over the period has immersed over the period has got refined and then these are the changes that has happened in the scrum guide but it is not needed for your exam well we heard about scrum we discussed about scrum and we discussed about all the good things but then there are shortcomings in scrum also so the most funny thing is that scrum doesn't have any guideline for design testing and deployment for example if you are making an app or making a big application then only to make that application it scrum can be applied but scrum doesn't say anything about design testing deployment it, it is yeah it's it's only highly focused on delivering product so if you are saying that you are designing and you are sprinting you are making a sprint of design that is rubbish scrum doesn't say anything about design testing and deployment uh scrum doesn't say about order uh, about anything about black backlog ordering or prioritizing yeah because people are self managing uh, self sufficient to take their own decisions and developers have should should have the power about this scrum planning daily scrum sprint review and sprint retrospective these are not formal non or formal meeting kind of informal meetings the scrum guide does not prescribe about product road map so multiple product goals cannot be organized progress measurements are done internally not by external manager so be wary that your team is only responsible for measuring the progress if an outside business guy is measuring the progress that is violation of scrum no one can do it only your product owner can measure your team's progress it says nothing about estimates like do hard work for better results or do intelligent work for smart results yeah you can you are free to work anyway but then 8 hours you are not allowed to do overtime management role is to facilitate as much information about the problem they are not there to guide you they are not there to obstruct you they are not there to challenge you or they are not there to criticize you remember this you can back answer that support and criticism and other support uh scrum uh, yeah de defined by the users yeah this is not required that much but then these ever points are required please uh, the, there is the, the reason why i have elaborated text texts because yeah people can read as well as listen to me and then they don't have to write any notes they can take snapshots of this uh, presentations okay uh, mm, this one we can skip because uh, this is not required and we already have discussed about sprint zero or integration sprints are not part of a sprint they are like uh, something extra and shouldn't be included in the sprints we have discussed about this technical debts this is a very fun thing huh? for example uh, i have uh, two applications in the market that is uh, trap and motobik and those two applications in those two applications i teach to my users or to my uh, users of the app uh, about how to drive in the netherlands but imagine that that app i have made that app in a very easy fun way so that you can double click and uh, two in two clicks you have Uh, already seeing the content and you are learning from it but imagine you have to click 10 times click here click there click there is very confusing the app nobody is able to know people are complaining about the app the learning curve is very high and then yeah the end users who are non technical they are not able to know or work efficiently that is a technical debt so make an application not for not not from your thinking but make an application considering the end users perspective so don't think yourself as smart and then uh, do something on your own think of the end users and then deliver the work accordingly don't give a technical debt to the non technical people that is what technical debt is about very good terminology implement or use it in the organization the person who is who has as 20% knowledge about scrum they will know about it okay so this is uh, the end of part 5 like and subscribe give me comments give your feedback etc etc and keep me or keep your give, give me your comments so that uh, i can improve this kind of videos further 
and uh, thank you for being part of my youtube community and then uh, the last part we're covering uh, in the next video i hope you enjoyed and you are growing yourself as a kind of uh, a lead or you are more um, motivated or more uh, enthusiastic about how you are going to execute your projects create your projects be a leader and make people follow you have a nice day and we'll see each other in the next video